Yo, so I made this cyberpunk edit and posted it on TikTok and it went quite crazy, it got over like a million views. Make sure to follow me on TikTok at Eli.Able. <laughs> a lot of people have been asking me how I did it, especially on DaVinci Resolve. So in this video, I'll be going through the steps I took in each part of the edit and the effects I used as well. You can also download the project file for the edit in the description below. I just basically slowed her down just to transition it in. I just added a solid color, keyframe the opacity just to make it fade in. Then I just added an adjustment clip above with a transform node and just zoomed it out with my graph looking like this. And then I went and added a one framer and a two framer. In a one framer, it's quite literally just an edge detect and a glow just to make it pop out a little bit more. In this one framer, I just added a background node and put an eclipse with these settings on here. And then I added more couple of ellipse nodes and then I added transform and zoomed it out and changed the edge to wrap just so we can have this half tone polka dot effect and then in the edit page i just changed the composite mode to hard mix and left at 100 and then i added starry particles which i got from a free pack i'll leave in the description and then to create the glitchy cyberpunk logo i basically keyframed it zooming out and then went back and cut up the individual frames to get this sort of glitching effect i duplicated these layers underneath and then moved them around as you can see here it adds more to the glitch effect above that i added a glow effect to this whole sequence i basically added a soft glow with these settings here and then i added a star glow and changed the gain so it's quite subtle and then I just added a color curves here and made the whole thing uh, look more purple. Then I wasn't happy enough with the glow so I just went underneath that layer and added a second glow which made it pop a bit more. Above that I went in and added this adjustment clip and in it I added scan lines which makes it kind of look like you're looking at it through a like a monitor screen or a tv screen with the scan lines here uh, which I just think was quite cool. And on that adjustment clip as well I added a vignette to it which kind of just darkens the edges there which I just wanted to do. Then I added flicker addition to this adjustment clip as well and then to really tie it off I thought that wasn't enough when making it so I also added this that swipes over the screen help transitioned it a little bit more i did that by a background node here and then with the rectangle i just animated it swiping up and down and i changed the levels of the rectangle so it appears like a bit faded out then i just went in and added a dent change it to type 2 um, with these settings so it kind of looks like it has sort of almost this fish lens sort of feel And this is the node tree for it. Basically, I made the whole thing in 3D space and I sectioned each part of this edit here into groups. The first group consisting of just the text and some things in the background. The second group being the main shapes that you see in the final edit. And I basically just did that by background nodes, soft glows and masks. And then I have a group especially for the subjects. So we have both marks and then later on in the edit, you'll see Mark talking to Lucy as well. And I basically added these guys by just using the polygon node here and masking them out. So I just went through and like masked out individual points. I think this is my first time like actually like properly masking uh so you can see here there's there's a lot of points where they just they just shouldn't be once i had that mask i turned it into a compound clip and then just dragged it from my media pool into the 3d space and added it to the image plane and then of course the transform to position it where i needed to be when i was making this whole sequence i wasn't sure where i was going with the edit so i added transforms because i thought maybe i would animate them and it was just best to use a transform to animate rather than the actual image plane but i didn't end up animating them so i just left it there and pretty much all of these clips here are the same length I just made them appear in different places and I did that by just going into the globe in and out and choosing the frame that I wanted it to appear in. So if we took a look at the merge here for our first image of Mark here, I had it appear at frame zero and end at 39, which would be here. So if we go one frame forward, you can see that disappears and then disappears because I had it appear at frame 39. So it, it appears and disappears on the same frame. This background node here just consists of this half tone like polka dot effect, which I got from the free peach pack. Altogether, the scene looks like this. If you are struggling on a low end system and it can't really handle 3d space there's a way to do this with parallax without going into 3d space i'll just leave a link to the description to that video and you can take a look for yourself but after i built out the scene i went and animated the camera by just adding a camera node here and then positioning it where i needed to be with the transform and these are what the movements of the camera looked like i'll just simplify it for you now and so the first movement it's literally just it's swiping and then the second one is another swipe but it begins in the middle or close to the end of that first swipe so it's a fluid movement rather than it just starting and stopping and I also did the same for that last swipe here and then these bars here that you see that come down at the end as it swipes the graph looks like this I basically just had them up and then you know, obviously just swipe down and I did that for the top and the bottom one as well so in the end we get this result
which is good, but we can definitely make it better. So first thing I did was I added the scan lines with the vignette again, like I did with the first clip. And also here, as you can see, the star particles go over this clip here and you can't see any in this part of the edit. I basically just keyframed the opacity and added a keyframe one frame apart. So over here, the opacity is zero and you wouldn't be able to see it again. I basically did that because as you stretch out the star particles, it lasts for longer and I like that effect. I had it at the beginning here, but I didn't want it to spill it over. So I just keyframed that out. And I also then went and added this flicker addition here, like I did in that first clip. I just like carried it over. And then to emphasize like the hi hat in the song I used, I just made glows um, and I keyframed them from the beginning. And I just keyframed the blend for it being at one in the beginning and then at the end or at the end frame at zero. And I did that for all of these flashes here. And then to add a nice transition from this first part to the second part, I added a bar swipe. I basically just did that by going into the fusion page and adding a background node and then adding a transform and literally just swiping it from the beginning to the end of the clip and with a keyframe in the middle to where the clip starts and ends and my graph looked like this which gave this swiping effect i know there is a better way of doing this but at the time i didn't know so i just used this this was good but i wanted it to start more on the right side and swiping over but i was just a bit too lazy to go into the fusion comp and tweaking the graphs and the camera position again so i just added an adjustment clip here and in this adjustment clip i basically added starter from the left here and i changed the edges to mirror i just changed it back to canvas you'll see that it just starts here and i had it swiping over with this graph here and then i also went and added a motion blur as well just to make it look a bit nicer and that's why you can see that little motion tile here um but i think it looks nice with the clip and then to add a nice finishing touch i added a shake and then to tie everything together i added these flickers here which is just more solid colors and i cut out the individual frames just to make it flicker a bit so this is how I used to set up my fusion comps. I wouldn't use this method of setting it up anymore. I usually set it up vertically rather than horizontally. So first off, before even adding anything, I add in scan lines to the clip and then just compound clipping it and bringing it into here. Then I use a rectangle node and mask it to my desired point. And then I add a transform node and position it where I wanted it to be. And then I added this red bar here by simply adding a background node and then using a rectangle mask to mask it out here. Then I added another rectangle mask and then I added another one. But instead of having the blend mode be merge, I had it be subtract so it takes away from this original rectangle and i basically then repeated the same thing for then this last segment here which gives this sort of bar thingy here i don't know what to call it and then to make it seem more uh three-dimensional i added a shadow just to make it pop out and be noticeable just a little bit more um i also added then added a white bar and then i also added a another background node and then a transform and i positioned it where i wanted to be there so it has enough space for the writing and text and then i went and added this uh polka dot effect here with the same effect that you saw in that first fusion comp and then i added this text here that sort of writes on and to do this i basically just use the follower tab but you just go into your text tab here and right click and hit follower for me it says remove follower because i already have it activated but in the follower modifier i delayed it by 1.32 and then i went it over into shading and place keyframes for the opacity appearance and color at the beginning on the third frame i changed the appearance so originally it was just an outline but now it's a solid color and i also changed the color as well so from red to black and then on this fifth keyframe here i changed the appearance and the opacity and the color again and then on the last keyframe i just changed the color and the appearance and then when played all together it gets this sort of right on effect after that to add this i use a text node rectangled it i know there is a better way of doing this now and then i went back and created this red bar here and i just did that by adding a background and then adding a rectangle node and then adding a transform and positioning where i want to be realistically just for a keep safe i keep adding transforms onto everything because i don't know it whether if i'm going to animated or not so i just add it in advance but obviously i didn't animate it and i could just take away this transform node here and then with the rectangle then position it where i want it to be for this um little sign thing here it's just basically a text node with r02 and then i just added a rectangle and keyed that out and i think it just looks cool i just like the way it looked so i just left it in for the text that appears here i basically just added the text and then in shading and opacity i just changed it so it's a little bit see-through you can kind of see through it just to add some contrast because if i left it fully white I don't know. I think it's just a bit of an ISO. I didn't, I didn't like it. So I just put the appearance down and then I just use a polygon and I just keyframe where I wanted it to appear. As I explained before, I just went in this clip, the globe in and out, and I changed, you know, where I wanted it to start and end. So it matched up with that swipe effect, which I think looks quite nice. And altogether, I used the same swiping bar effect just to transition it. But I also added a shadow onto this one as well. I also did the exact same thing with a swipe, which I think looks nice. I just tied everything off together. 
I basically did the same thing for that other comp that we just went over. I just went through the steps of adding each individual thing to where I liked it to be. Um, now that I'm looking back, this whole thing I feel like isn't really well designed. It was like my first time really trying this, but it is what it is. For the car here, I used Runway ML to just rotate it out. So you can see like there's imperfections here, but now obviously I have the paid version and I can just use Magic Mask in the future to mask it out. To add a nice transition from it being from this scene to this, I basically just add this effect where the car like sort of like drives into the scene. Did that by having a still image of the car and then using a polygon node and then masking it out and then adding a transform and having it swipe from the beginning there to the end. And then I just added motion blur because I think it looks a lot better with motion blur. To make the transition a little better, I added a shake and as well as a flash. And I made the flash appear a little bit before that transition there. And of course, then I added the flicker addition with the vignette and scan lines. And I think it just, it just made this whole scene look a little better. I added another flash as well. And I did make this one start as the scene begins. I wasn't happy with this. So then I went and added this effect with the dent. I basically just put a dent node in and I choose type three. And then I keyframed the strength and made the graph look like this. So it has this sort of bouncing effect. And then to finishing touch, I added more motion blur again, just to make it, you know, look a little nicer. To get this effect, what I did basically was I used the follow modifiers again, but this time I made the delay 0.71. I keyframed the size here and I changed the order from inside out because if it was automatic, it would look like this. I just wasn't happy with the way that looked there. So I changed it to inside out. I added a glow to this to make it look nice. And then of course, then I added a dent again and changed it to type two and had these settings. I added these two time speed nodes just to change the FPS without the two time speeds. It looks a lot smoother, but I wanted the FPS to be a little laggy just to have sort of more of a laggy effect. But then I basically added then that to the scene and then I added starry particles and then continuing that shake that happened, I cut it according to where the starry particles appeared appeared and added the same time speed and then I added a blur as you can see it sort of blurs around the edges on the top here just to get more focus towards the center piece here basically just did that by adding a blur node and then ellipsing it with these settings if I was to remake this again I would have probably just used Gangent blur instead I think it just the, the blur just looks a little bit better and then to tie everything together I added a flash and as you can see here it transitions into the next clip basically did by just extending the fusion comp to the end of this fusion comp here, cutting it in half. And then I made this into a compound clip and pulled that into the fusion clip here. As you can see, I just pulled it in there and then went back and forth and make sure that, you know, things were all right. And then to get this transition I did here is basically the same fusion clip, but obviously I cut it in half and I removed the background and some of the parts that you see here in this fusion clip and you don't see in this as well. It has the same camera movement. So that's why I got the sort of almost seamless transition transition there. And in this fusion clip, it's laid out the same as that first fusion clip I showed in where I just placed everything where I want it to be that I thought looked nice in the camera. To create this circle effect here, basically all I did was added a 3D text node and of course then typed out what I wanted to type out. Changed the layout from point to circle uh, so it has this circle effect. And then I just played around with the rotation and of course then the transform and position there where I want it to be. And then in the edit tab, I basically did the same thing that I did in the beginning with the solid color. I sort of faded it in. I added some more glows and of course then I added a shake to tie the whole thing together. And then to add this bar here, basically all I did was added a background node, added a rectangle mask and then changed it to invert and just added a shadow and then I keyframed it sliding down. a color corrector and changed it over to the red and then added another star glow here as you can see i duplicated this layer and placed it above and then i uh, exported it and placed it into runway ml and then i rotoed out lucy it's not a perfect roto but you can't really tell and then to add this sort of uh, scouter like tracker beeper thing i basically tracked her face I added a background with the rectangle and then just changed the levels in alpha to make it sort of see-through i added then the text and another text here which sort of counts up in percentages using an expression I added a number counter and then just keyframed it from zero to my desired number which was 17% uh, and then to get this effect here basically all I did was add the rectangle here and then I copied and pasted the same rectangle and then I just changed the corner radius and added a soft flow into that and to get the beeping sort of effects basically all I did was change the levels of this first rectangle here and I just basically copied and pasted the keyframes and made them repeat there's another way of doing this which is just having your original keyframe here and selecting and just pressing loop here 
here and it just loops everything for you and then i added them to all one merge node and made those movements here with the transform with it just going left and right and then singling down to her face then at the end and then close to the beat drop i basically then cut these clips here and in the second clip i changed the color correction and then to sort of have it transition in i added a two framer of um, basically the still image of this first bit that you see here and i changed the opacity mode on this to get this effect and i left it at 100 and then of course here to transition into this next scene i basically just add a zoom and then of course added the same bar animation then i added shakes the usual scan lines with vignette and flicker addition once i did that i basically did the same thing as, as i did before with that bar swipe there and this time i added a shake so it sort of transitions nicely into it and the flash there just to basically tie everything in together and then for the end i just left it and chose uh, these two clips here